Welcome to my lecture line. In this video, we're going to try and understand what a steradian is just a little bit better. We're going to calculate the angle, what we call the linear angle of a steradian. Remember, if we have a solid angle of a steradian here, that the surface area that you subtend here because of the steradian angle is going to equal the total area of the sphere divided by 4 pi, which is equal to the radius of the sphere squared. Now, what we're trying to do is find out if the solid angle had a circular shape, what would be the angle from the middle of that area down to the edge of the area. We're looking for this angle right here to get a feel of how big a steradian is. To do that, we need to understand how to calculate the surface area of a sphere. And for that, we need a small little area element we'll call a dA. And that dA is equal to r sine phi d theta r d phi which can be written as r squared sine of phi d theta d phi. Now notice that it's almost exactly the same as the volume element in spherical coordinates, except we're missing the dr. The reason why we're missing the dr, we simply want to find the area of a small little area element on the surface of a sphere. The distance from the center of the sphere to there would be equal to r. And so this distance from there to there is going to be an r d phi, and the distance from there to there is going to be an r d theta, but we also have to multiply it times the sine of phi because this area becomes skinnier and skinnier near the top when the angle is 0 degrees and when the angle is 180 degrees on the other side of the sphere. So that gives us the area element, but we don't have to integrate through a dr, which would give it a volume. So it's simply the area element. If we now integrate over that area element, the angle theta from 0 to 2 pi, all the way around the circle or all around the sphere, and the angle phi from 0 to pi, all the way from top to bottom, we should get the full surface area of a sphere. So we take the area element. We know that r squared, this is simply going to be a constant, so we can pull it, r, pull it out and simply call it r squared, the radius of the circle square. We integrate d theta, that becomes theta from 0 to 2 pi, so this becomes 2 pi times r squared. And then we integrate the sine of phi d phi. If we integrate the sine of phi d phi from 0 to pi, that becomes a minus cosine of phi from 0 to pi, which is equal to 2. 2 times 2 pi r squared is 4 pi r squared, which is the full area, surface area of the sphere. Okay, next, what I'm trying to do now is I'm trying to find out what this angle is equal to in such a way that this area here will be r squared. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the full surface area of a sphere, which is 4 pi r squared. We're going to divide that by 4 pi. So this gives us the area that you get when you have a steradian. That would be this area right here, which is r squared. And we're going to set that equal to 2 pi r squared times minus the cosine of phi evaluated from 0 to the angle we're looking for. We're looking for the linear angle that gives us the size of a steradian. Okay, so we're trying to isolate this, so we're going to divide both sides of the equation by 2 pi r squared. Divide this by 2 pi r squared, we get 2 divided by 4 pi is equal to this divided by 2 pi r squared times negative cosine of phi evaluated from 0 to phi sub naught, the angle we're looking for. And this, of course, is 1 over 2 pi, like this. Now, when we evaluate this, this would be equal to, when plug in the upper limit, we get minus the cosine of phi sub naught. Then plug in the lower limit with a cosine of 0, which is 1. We subtract that, but we get minus 1. Subtract that, we get plus 1. OK, we've got to be careful with the signs here. So now what I have here is we have 1 over 2 pi is equal to minus the cosine of phi sub naught, the angle I'm looking for, plus 1. So what we need to do here is isolate this, so bring this to the left, bring this to the right. That means that the cosine of phi sub naught is equal to, when I bring this over here, 1 minus that, 1 minus 1 over 2 pi. And if we calculate that, let's see here with a calculator. So 1 divided by 2 divided by pi equals, subtract that from 1, 
we get the cosine of phi sub naught is equal to 0 0.8485, 84085, like that. Then if we take the arc cosine of that, the inverse cosine, we get phi sub naught is equal to the inverse cosine of 0 0.84085. And so that means that the angle is equal to 32.77 degrees. So there you have it. If you want a circular solid angle that is equal to once the radian, you need to make an angle here from the center of that area to the edge of the area of 32.77 degrees, rotate it all the way around, and then you end up with a solid angle that is equal to one the radian. And to have the entire surface of the sphere, you need four pi of those angles, four pi the radians, in order to have the entire surface of a sphere. And so hopefully it gives us a slightly better idea of what a steradian is, and roughly the size of a steradian in terms of a linear measurement from the central portion of the steradian to the edge of the steradian. So you need another 32.77 degrees to, to the other side. So the cross section of it, if you want to think of it, is basically double this. So roughly about a 65 degree angle going across through what we call the solid angle of a steradian. Hopefully that helps, and this is how we figure it out.